Hey guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Rolling Heights by John DeClaire, published by AEG. This is a one to four player game that takes roughly 60 minutes and is for ages 10 and up. And in the game Rolling Heights, you are attempting to build a city. You and your opponents are going to be rolling meeples, yes you heard that correctly, rolling meeples, attempting to get them on their sides, or better yet, standing up, scoring resources, utilizing those resources to buy building permits, as well as utilizing those resources as building on your permits to then accomplish your goal of getting your specific location and building it up. Once you've built up your location, you'll get victory points, reward points, and of course reward workers that you can use to roll. You can have up to a total of 10 workers that you can roll during your term. You'll be rolling these guys, gaining the bonus points and resources and everything you can utilize in order to build your cities, gain your permits, build your buildings up based on the city's requirements, and score points. You'll go through this until one of these four different resource points pools empties, in which case you're going to have a wild resource pool that you can utilize for the next round, which after that next round, the game will be over. Will you build the largest buildings and score the most points that way, or the most diverse areas, or attempt to complete the specific objectives throughout the game to score you even more points? Find out in the game Rolling Heights, the game of worker placement, worker roles, scoring resources, and of course tile placement, where you build your biggest city possible. Rolling Heights is a big game, and because it's a big game, it requires a big setup. The first thing you'll do is you will take the main six game board pieces and you will put them together. Based on the number of players, you will determine whether you use the A side or the B side. In a two player game, you'll be putting out all four A sides and connecting them to each other in a two by three grid. And then when you play a three player, you'll switch a couple of the A's to B's. And then in a four player, you'll switch three of the A's to B's, forming larger land masses so that there's more placement that can be made. After you've got these six down in your chosen setup, you'll also take the main game board where you're going to be utilizing victory point trackers, as well as, of course, what each of your workers do, and the three unique objectives. Speaking of which, each player who has in, who is in the game is going to place one of their main uh, victory point markers on the zero space of the game board. And you're also going to shuffle up the victory conditions, or the unique bonus victory points that you can gain at the end of the game, and deal three of them out face up in play. After that, then go ahead and take these three little panels here. These three panels are actually uh, the level one and level two uh, building permit locations. And you'll be setting them up into a one by three and placing them on the sides of the game board. Then take the level one permits and shuffle them up and place them on the very edge next to the space that reads level one and do the same for level two. Then deal out uh, nine different tiles from the top of this deck down in a row starting from the very end and going all the way to the very front. The very front is the cheaper area and the very end is the more expensive area. You'll do the same for level two. After you've done that, then go ahead and take out all the pieces in the game. I'll just go through them all really quick. There are four different main building types. You're going to have your browns, your grays, your blues, and your whites. You're also going to have to set aside the oranges, which you will use at the very end of the game. On the opposite end of the board, you're going to take all of your meeples, your purples, pinks, yellows, whites, blues, uh, peaches, and greens, and set them aside within reach of all players. Take all of your bonus victory points slash wild resource tokens and set them aside next to all players. Uh, your one through six tokens for a solo player game mode. And then of course, you'll have these target tokens and these bonus objective tokens, which after you've dealt them all out, you can put back into the box. Give one player the first player starting token. And if you want to play the Angry Ape mode, just go ahead and set this guy aside somewhere within reach for the winning player to take control of at the end of the game, which I'll explain in my review. For each player, they're going to be getting a game box. This is where they roll their meeples. Each player is going to start the game with four meeples. Two of them are going to be gray, and two of them are going to be brown. These are what you use to start the game off. You're never going to get any more, and you'll never get any less. Then you're going to give each player their color of these building permit guides. These guys here are going to be placed on their building permits to let people know that those are their locations. Finally, give to each player two of these target tiles. These are going to be, at the end of the game, bonus individual private uh, victory points that you can gain. Some of them are going to give you three points for having the wild tokens for each two of them. Some are going to give you additional points for having completed buildings and having them next to each other. They're all randomized. Just grab two of them and place them down next to each player. 
And then after that, that's pretty much the entire setup of the game. If you're playing with additional players, go ahead and pull them out of the bag. And I always suggest too, to have each player start with their victory point marker, all of their building permit token tiles, uh, and, and of course their two brown and their two grays in each bag. And then you're ready to go. Now, for such a large game and a large setup, you'd think it'd be a more complex game, but it's actually quite simple how to play. Basically what happens is every single player is going to gather up to 10 meeples, and they're going to roll those meeples into this little box here. Each, each player is going to get their own little box that they can utilize, and they're going to roll them all simultaneously, and after they roll them, they will check to see where the meeples are standing. If the meeples are on their back, they're useless. They're basically like lazy workers. If they're on their side, they're ready, and if they're on their like top end, if they're standing up straight, then they're like really hard working. Hard working meeples are worth the most in value. The next is going to be these guys who are ready, and then these guys who are lazy are worth nothing. You can re-roll your meeples until half of your meeples are on their side or standing up. If you want, you can continue though. But if you continue, and when you roll the extra meeples, if none of them hit their side or are standing up, then you're going to bust, and you're just going to get a wild token. Which means it's very dangerous to continue to push your luck in this game. So, basically after you've rolled your meeples, I'll go ahead and just roll my meeples really quick here. I have one standing up, one standing up, and one on its side, and then this is laying down on its back. I would stop there. I could, however, try and roll this guy for most value, in which case I would get it this time. But I would be careful, because if I did that, then I would not get anything. In this case though, I would then go ahead and check to see what I've got. And in turn order, players are going to gather the resources based on the meeples they rolled. The uh, brown, gray, blue, white meeples are going to give you one of these four resources. These are also buildings and the resources as well. Standing up, they'll give you two. Laying on their side, they're going to give you one. And if they're laying on their back, of course, this is going to count for nothing. There are other meeples in the game that you're going to gain. Some are going to give you additional buying power for additional building permits. Others are going to give you value based on the type of tile that you're utilizing, and you can choose one tile for each of those meeples. Some are going to give you victory points. Others are going to let you reroll your meeples for free, and some will let you upgrade a meeple from laying down to on its side or from on its side to standing up. Once you have selected your resources after rolling, you are going to use those resources. And there's two main ways you use resources. You may buy one building permit every round. The building permit cost is on the uh, adjacent uh, th one by three, and it tells you how many squares are required. And those are basically wild resources. Any of these four will work. You can spend one of them to get one of these guys over here, or two of them for one of these guys, or three for one of these guys. These are randomized, so they're not necessarily better or worse depending on how far you go along. It's just what's available to you. If you purchase the ones on the close end, the first two, then you're just going to select that and place it down. If you select any other ones, you're going to take a wild resource and place it on the side, on the one or two space, of the side that you chose to buy from. So if I chose this one here, then I get a wild resource on these guys here, which are then going to net players these bonuses when they choose to buy these. So be aware of when you choose to buy what you're choosing to buy, because it can benefit your opponents to do so. After you have bought a resource, so for instance, if I got, let's just say I got uh, two blues and two grays and two browns, I can then go ahead and buy, I'll just go and buy this guy here at the very end for one piece, I'll choose this blue here. I can then place this guy out. I can place this guy anywhere I want on the game board, and then I have to use the rest of my resources and place them down on existing permits. Any other resources that I have that I don't utilize are going to go back into the bank. Whenever you purchase a building permit and put it down on the game board, you're going to take one of your little building permit tokens and place it on there to let people know it's yours. Additionally, at the very beginning of the game, you're also going to make sure that you start with one of these. You can choose any one of the level ones and place it down on the board along with your little marker to indicate it's yours. And each player will do that. And make sure you have to make it sure it's two spaces away. But yeah, anyway, after you've placed this down, placed any resources you can on any of your buildings, then you are going to pass. And the next player will do the same. And it'll just continue from there. Players are going to then uh, gather more meeples whenever they complete a building. So this one here is five brown and five more brown. When you complete this, you're going to get two yellow meeples and three victory points. Or this one over here is going to give you uh, five victory points and a green meeple when you have a white, a white, and three blue. Uh, this one over here is going to give you a blue or a white meeple in three points when you have a one brown, three brown, and a two brown. 
Placement also matters in the game too. When you choose a permit and you place it on the game board, you can place them anywhere, of course, um, but there is restrictions. When you place uh, one farther away from your cur another current location of yours, it's gonna cost you one extra additional resource. The only other way to avoid this is by placing it adjacent to one of your current locations. Also check where you place them. When you choose to place one of these guys down, there's likely to be a cost. If it's blank, it's free. If there's a cost, like resources, it'll be one, two, or three, and it'll also usually give you victory points. Additionally, certain locations on the board are going to require you to place certain types of these building permits. Some of them will only let you place houses or forest tiles or industrial tiles, and it'll let you know when you choose to place those guys there. But otherwise, that's how you play the game. Everybody rolls their meeples, then in turn order, they spend their resources buying either a building or buying a, um, or placing down their resources onto building permits, placing them down, scoring victory points, etc., etc. Uh, additionally, too, whenever you buy a permit, you're going to be moving all of these in the direction labeled on these boards here, and then you're going to flip over new tiles, allowing other players to buy stuff. You'll do that at the end of every player's turn, thusly the board will always be filled for all players looking to do so. When one of these resource pools runs out, that's when the game is going to trigger the last round. For the last round, these orange building pieces are going to be resources that can be used for any building pieces that are not currently in existence. So if I ran out of gray tiles or gray, gray resources here, I would use these as grays for that final round. If I ran out of grays and browns, I could use these for grays or browns. That's a way to keep track of additional points when you need to place them down at the last round if there are no resources available. Whenever you score points, you're going to be using these little markers and moving them around this board here. And if you ever get to 50, you'll take one of your little building permit player markers and just place it on the 50 and then you can just keep going on the victory point track. But otherwise, that's basically how you play the game. At the end of the game, you score up all of your points. You get extra points for any of these bonus tiles here that you did not use. You'll get victory points after uh, you select one of these targets at the end of the game, scoring points on one of them. And then you also get victory points for these end of game achievements. Some of them are going to be detriments, others are going to be benefits, and some are going to be some type of combination. And there you go. That's how you play the game, Rolling Heights. So let's go ahead and talk about it. So if you know what John DeClaire makes as far as board games, when you get into Rolling Heights, you will see a lot of the type of stylization of game he enjoys. He has a little bit of dexterity attached to it where you're rolling the meeples and you're gathering resources, a little bit of tile placement, board control, and of course, combinations. Some buildings are gonna have unique bonus abilities that you can utilize with certain meeples. Some resources and or meeples are more valuable than others. And of course, you have the ability to kind of sandbox your way into building any type of city that you would like. You can start off building these guys here or attempting to build these guys here as long as you have the required meeples to do so. Um, and you can just kind of create and manufacture your own little city. Now certain cities have requirements as to how you can place them or how many points you get when you place them on unique areas. Some meeples are not going to grant you resources but will give you victory points. Some resources or meeples will give you additional resources to just buy buildings. And sometimes you can even make a building for free. These tiles are going to be coming out and changing the game up. And there's also little expansions too. We have little Kickstarter promo packs. Uh, this is the designer pack and like the Angry Ape one. And this one over here is the waterfront pack that has tiles they can only place adjacent to water, thusly changing the game a little bit. There's a bunch of like little mini aspects to the game as you play. The game itself is very simple. Roll meeples gather the resources slash buildings. They're basically buildings and resources, and then either spend them to get permits or utilize them as building, uh, you know, construction pieces to construct your building, finish it off, place this little cap thing on top, and then of course, score your victory points. So in this case here, this is a five and five. It's actually a really big one. But once you're able to do so, you're actually gonna get something that looks kind of like a little building thing, which is kind of cool. I like how at the end of this game, Everything feels like it com comes together. It feels like a little city has been built. Uh, it's the closest thing to SimCity I've seen so far as far as uh, the buildings and constructions go and uh, placing and gathering workers and whatnot. So once you've got this guy here, this is a five by five, um, you're gonna play, or five and a five. You can go ahead and place this here. This indicates that you're done building this. You'll gain your, your bonus meeples. You'll gain your victory points. At certain times during the game, you're gonna have more meeples than you're allowed to roll. So you can kind of decide throughout the rest of the game 
what meeples you want to roll and how you want to gain your points slash gain your abilities or gain your resources to build new things. You might be going after something like this really big um, mood hotel here, uh, bougie hotel, I don't know what you want to call it, uh, where you only need blue and white. So I'm going to go ahead and I would go ahead and get rid of my gray and brown meeples if I had more than 10 because I'm focusing on that. But then all of a sudden I finish with that and now I'm starting to work on this park over here, the uh, Viceroy house, in which case I'll need a lot of browns. So you'll have custom even when it comes to rolling your guys. It might seem um, unfair when rolling these guys, like one person might get them all on their back and one person might get them all up on top. It's possible there is chance involved, but because you can roll them up until you get at least half, you're always gonna have at least half value. The only thing you don't wanna do in this game is bust. If you bust in this game, you are going to be in deep doo-doo. Do not bust if you can help it. It's sometimes worth it to not roll. If you have four extra meeples or more, you should probably keep rolling, but once you get to that very end point, you're very likely on the same standing as any other player, and pushing yourself to try and get those points may be worth it sometimes, but other times it's just going to hurt you in the long run and potentially make you bust, and you'll lose out on an entire turn at the end of the game, which is so detrimental. Other than two of this game, that's a kind of slight issue I have is there's a lot of permits, and I like that. I like the choice. I like the variety, but Every time you buy one of these things, you have to push everything down and flip a new guy over, and then it's the next player's turn, they buy something, and everything has to go down. And, and so there's a lot of kind of like just mechanical aspects to this game. Uh, the, the little houses, if you have one fall, it might topple and have a bunch of other pieces fall. You have to be very careful with your placement on your little building tiles. Some of them can be quite big. This is a nine and a seven, a four, two, and a four to two. If that nine falls off next to this building, it might tumble everything over. So be aware of that when you're playing the game. There's just little finicky things about it. That being said, let's now gush. This game is excellent. I love the idea of playing SimCity. I love the idea of placing my own tiles. How each of the tiles give you unique benefits. They can give you abilities. You can select different uh, meeples to roll to gather those abilities. They might give you victory points. They might give you additional resources. They might let you buy certain things. And how you place matters. When you place, you can score victory points just based on placement, and that can give you a lot of points overall. Or instead, you go for the easier placements to build your buildings to score points with that has beautiful components. All of these guys are easy to tell the difference between. The colors all match the different pieces. It's very straightforward and you know what you're trying to do as you're trying to do it. If you feel like you don't have a plan, you can just go on the fly. You don't have to have this kind of like this extreme grandiose thing that you want to do throughout the game. You play it as you play it and you just enjoy the game your first couple games. This is a game that's going to last, too. There's a ton of components. There's a ton of choice. There's a ton of things that you can select. I didn't even play with three of the different meeple workers my first two games, which means that I have a lot of variety that I'm going to get to set up. Next time, I'll try to go as the political route, where I'll be scoring a bunch of points, utilizing 10 of these meeples to just score me points every round and not worry about the buildings after I've gotten enough of them. That might be a really cool strategy as well. The wild tokens are an excellent addition as well, making players buy on the side if they choose to buy anywhere else it's going to cost them and it's going to benefit you as well and if they stack too high you're going to give somebody a lot of points so sometimes you might make choices that are not as good for you because you know it's going to hurt, hurt your opponent or not, at least not help them when they gather pieces for themselves there is like cooperation not cooperation i should say in the game but there's like a little slight competition in the game but you don't feel like you're directly like punching somebody you're just like i'm gonna place here because this is the spot that i need and it's gonna help me with my victory condition and then they're like, oh, I wanted to place there. And like that's as much as it gets as far as nastiness goes, but it's enough to where it changes the game for their players and manipulates them into building cities they normally wouldn't build in certain areas. The artwork in the game is great. I love the feeling of the buildings. And you see down below, when you look down below, you see the city streets, you see the building skyscrapers. You know which ones are yours, you know which ones you can choose to utilize. And then there's just the little extra things that you can add to the game. The little end of game, ape dude that you can play where you're flicking the guy over to try and knock over the buildings of other players when you're playing as the winner. Just a nice little addition. There is a lot to love about the game. The meeples are really nice quality. Everything is really nice quality. Everything fits really well. This game just really, really works for me. I pretty much love all of his games, and this one is actually going to be ranking up above a few of them that I have in my personal collection. This even goes above Edge of Darkness. Uh, so, if you like John DeClaire games, if you loved Space Base, if you loved Mystic Veil, vale, if you loved um, 
Dead Reckoning, then this is another one of those games that is so different from them, but yet still feels so close to like the type of game I enjoy. He does a great job. This is definitely my favorite designer of board games, and there's a reason for that. He puts a lot of time, a lot of effort to making this game fun and dynamic and make it make something for everybody in his games. And Rolling Heights has something for everybody. I I love making little cities. Buy this game. This is getting a seal of approval. If you haven't already gotten it yet, this is, then what are you waiting for? Don't you want to build a little city? Don't you like SimCity? Rolling meeples? Construction? Tile placement? Resource management? It's got, it's good. Buy it. That's it. I got nothing else to say. It's good. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Rolling Heights. If you're interested in this game, go ahead and take a look down below in the description. You can go ahead and pick it up. You can also go ahead and comment and subscribe. Subscribe to the channel. If you watch more than one of our videos, I suspect you have. Hopefully, it will get you enough. I do want you to take a look at the game. It will make you want to pick, pick it up because it, it's, it is so much fun. Now, we have a live stream every Sunday and every Wednesday. Wednesdays on WhatNot and Sundays on live stream with Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook at 6.30 p.m. PST. Don't miss us. We play games just like this one. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time. I'm done gushing. I look forward to seeing you next time.